Today we're going to be talking about plant-based milks, dairy alternatives specifically for coffee. This is a project that I've been working on for a few months now, and as a result, I obviously have a bias here. I have a vested interest in the success of this, and you should know that going in, but I think there's some super interesting stuff in the process, in the development of this, that, that I wanted to share. So a little while back, I was approached by a company called Rebel Kitchen. They're a small UK-based, privately-owned company, and they do plant-based alternatives. And they've actually done plant-based alternatives to dairy before, but one's kind of for daily use, to put on your cereal in the morning, put in tea, but, but not something specifically for coffee and cafes. Because when you bring coffee into it, particularly espresso, you bring a host of different challenges. Once you bring in steaming and texturing milk, there are even more challenges. And overcoming those was really fun, was really interesting, and I learned a bunch of stuff that I kind of want to share. Now, I've been interested, like many people, in plant-based alternatives for, for a little while now, and there's a number of reasons driving that, and that was one of the big motivations for me actually to work on this project. Now, if I'm being honest, historically speaking, go back five, maybe ten years, plant-based alternatives to meat and dairy weren't very good. They didn't taste particularly nice, they weren't particularly enjoyable, and they were chosen for a host of other reasons outside of taste. And I think what we've seen more of in the last couple of years is that people are willing to make a switch, people are willing to consume plants over meat, over dairy, as long as it doesn't feel like a compromise. People don't want anything less than a great cappuccino, a great flat white, and so that's been a big barrier for a long time for people switching away from dairy. Now one thing I couldn't help but note is that there are a bunch of dairy alternatives out there, but they seem like weirdly monogamous affairs. It's oat and nothing but oat, or it's almond and nothing but almond, or it's soy and nothing but soy. You, you, you get the point. What actually appealed to me about this project is that they wanted to look at a much broader spectrum of plants to chase down this no-compromise alternative. That, that definitely appealed to me. Dairy milk is kind of amazing, and at no point could I deny that coffee plus dairy is delicious. It, it really does taste wonderful. A lot of people enjoy that combination of, of coffee's flavour, softened by milk, sweetened by milk, enriched by milk. That, that makes for a lovely combination enjoyed the world over. Can't argue with that. But there's more complexity to what milk is doing. There's more challenge in the replication of that. And there are two broad categories to worry about here. You've got taste, and, and that's how does it feel to drink, how does it taste, what kind of flavours does it have? And then, in the coffee world, you've got texture. How does it steam? How does it pour? How does it sit in the cup? Does it last? Does it fall to pieces? These are two technically different puzzles, and solving one can unsolve another one. That's the frustration of this whole deal. Now, it's very important in this video that you hear from someone who really, really, really knows what they're talking about. So I'd like to introduce you to one of the food scientists from Rebel, meet Zara. Hi, my name is Zara. I am the product developer for Rebel Kitchen, and today we're going to be talking about Rebel Kitchen barista milk. And to give you an idea of how deeply immersed in this project she is, I asked her pretty early on in the conversation how many iterations, how many recipes they'd gone through for this particular product. I think there was like 146. 146. Yeah, and that was probably the quickest we've done it. Okay, let's talk some foam science. When you steam milk, you are introducing air to it. You're creating foam, and you're using the steam wand to drag air down and push it in. And then you're going to use the steam wand to kind of whisk that foam down so the bubbles are so small that they're pretty much invisible. This requires something that foams. And Lots of things can foam in these kind of situations. Oat is a great addition for this particular thing, but what you also need from a texture perspective it is not just this marshmallowy, gooey, foamy goodness. You need some fat. And fat's a bit of a problem. Fat is one of the things that we really enjoy in dairy milk. A lot of people like whole milk for that texture. And fat does impact flavour as well. Fat inhibits flavour release a little bit, so you have a less intense cappuccino if it's full fat, but it does linger in the mouth a little bit longer. A skim milk version would have a much more intense, sort of short burst of flavour, but just wouldn't really hang around. But fat also can inhibit foam formation and certainly inhibit foam stability. And that's the kind of push-pull in this kind of thing. You want enough fat that it feels very nice to drink, but not so much that it damages it in terms of its foam ability. But there is one more role that fat plays, and that's the viscosity of the whole thing. When you steam milk, before you pour that foamed milk into the cup, you generally swirl the pitcher. 
and this causes the liquid milk to be whisked and sort of swirled back into the foam, making the foam heavy enough that when you tilt the jug, foam is dragged out with the liquid underneath, and at that point you can pour latte art, you can produce beautiful looking coffees. If you didn't do that, then when you tip the jug, a sort of dry raft of foam would sit back and liquid would flow from underneath. If your milk lacks that thickness, that viscosity, it will be difficult to work with, it'll drain too quickly. So making sure you've got that viscosity is actually super important from a practical, technical perspective when you're using this stuff behind a coffee bar. And then there's one more little twist, which is how does that foam hold up once it's poured? And actually here, I think they did an amazing job in a bunch of testing. The foam from this outlasts the foam from dairy milk by quite a considerable amount. It's kind of been weird for me to be drinking cappuccinos and flat whites on the regular again. I'd pretty much stopped for over a decade for a host of different reasons, and it's kind of fun coming back to this all again. Now, one of the big things I wanted to talk to Zara about for this video was the ingredients of the end product. You know, you look at the back of a pack and there's a few different things there, and you might want to know why. And so that's what I'll share with you now. Me talking to Zara, going through ingredient by ingredient, uh, and getting some more explanation about the thought process uh, and the development process that went into selecting them and getting them tuned to this particular recipe. Okay, so first water, obviously. Second, oats. Oats, oat milk seems very popular. Mm. What's oat doing in this? It's giving you a little bit of the body. It's giving you a little bit of the texture. It's helping kind of smooth everything out, but it's also giving you a little bit of flavor, a little bit of sweetness that isn't overpowering. It's not too harsh or too strong. Obviously, oat is a really popular ingredient um, within the coffee space because of its neutrality, let's say. But we wanted to kind of take that, but also innovate one, one extra on that. And, and that's why there's other ingredients in there too. So the next one is interesting to me, which is coconut cream. Because mm. in tasting this, at no point did I think it tasted of coconut, but right. I associate coconut cream with having quite an intense coconut flavor. Mm -hmm. Coconut cream is actually a really, really lovely base and we use it in our semi-skimmed and whole milk. Um, but we didn't put it in there in too much of a percentage inclusion for you to taste it because obviously it's it's quite a strong taste and it could take away from the from the coffee. It's got a really lovely texture, it's really velvety and we found that actually it really helped with the the tightness of the microfoam and actually how velvety the milk ended up being but kind of getting that balance without it coming through too much as a flavour and just in there as a, a function and, and mouthfeel kind of. Next one up is sunflower oil. Mm -hmm. This actually came through um, when you were in and you were testing our different milks out and we were kind of trying to understand what was working and what wasn't quite early stage. And we found that actually it would have been great to have even more coconut in there to just add even more body. But as you said, it comes through in the flavor too much. So we needed a secondary source of fat, which is where the sunflower oil came in. Just really lovely, organic, um, pressed sunflower oil, not solvent extracted. Uh, and it, it just gave it a little bit more texture, a little bit more body, um, and it really helped with the, the mouthfeel and the, the velvetiness of it again, and, and the microfoam. So yeah, that was a, a turning point because we originally were just gonna use the coconut and we found actually it wasn't right for the product and we needed to. So the next one is a little bit interesting to me, which is faba bean protein. The faba bean was a really interesting one. We started off with hemp uh, and we found that the hemp just gave too many flavor notes to the product and it was just a bit too bitter and it just took away from the neutral profile we were going for. So we found the faba bean, which was really lovely, organically grown in Finland. Um, and it's just kind of grown, de-hulled and, and ground into a, a, a flower. Um, and it's, it's got a lovely texture, a lovely savory profile, just a hint of savory, uh, but really neutral. And it, we were able to add it in there at just the right balance to have it come through, but not be too overpowering to the rest of the profile. A sunflower seed extract. Mm -hmm. The sunflower seed extract is a, it's a really nice ingredient. It actually just keeps everything bound together. Um, and there are a lot of sort of similar ingredients out there which are quite harshly extracted with alcohols or acids or, you know, just quite harshly processed. But for us, we use one which is, it's really lovely. It's water processed, so it's super gentle and it still does the same thing that you need it to do, um, but without being so harsh. And that's something really important for Rebel Kitchen. All of our ingredients go through a really, really extensive kind of approval process to make sure, you know, is this factory or is this supplier um, adhering to good environmental practice and good um, eth ethical policies and just 
um, around the, the farming of the product. That's so important to us. I mean, going back as, as much as we can and getting all that detail, um, not only because we're organic, but also because we're a B Corp. So that's really important to us from a, just a, a governing point of view to, right. to really know what's in our products and really be sure of the quality. Because um, if you start off with good quality ingredients, I mean, you're already halfway there. <laughs> So nutritional yeast, mm -hmm. uh, I presume, is a flavour thing. It's used in a lot of vegan cooking to kind of give a, a bit of a cheesy note. So obviously we're not putting it in there to taste cheesy, but it's just a touch to give it a, a kind of savoury dairy note. So it works really well with the fava bean, um, but it's in at such a low quantity that you wouldn't necessarily taste it or detect it. It just adds a slight dimension. Potassium carbonate, which mm -hmm. is, I uh, assume, acting as a buffer because mm -hmm. you're dealing with coffee being super acidic mm -hmm. and that's often a... Problem. Because we're organic, we have really strict guidelines about what we can and can't put in our products. So from the ones that we were able to put in, uh, we tested them all out. Some were great, some had a really quite bitter aftertaste, quite saline aftertaste, and we found that actually potassium carbonate was the most neutral, but also gave it just enough kind of buffer, just softened it enough um, without taking away too much of the, of the flavour. Last one, which is sea salt. This was really a tricky one because we were getting a lot of bitterness. Uh, I played with like every ingredient, taking it down, adding in a little bit more, and I just couldn't get rid of the bitterness at all. And I thought, you know, this is probably coming from the coffee. Like, I've tried everything. And it was just a touch of salt, which actually takes away the bitterness, which is, I know something you've touched on before as well. Like it really works. And so now it's live. It's officially launched. It's out there in the world and I'm pretty excited about that. If you want to try it, and I hope you do, but if you're curious, there's a few different ways to do so down below. There's a little giveaway you can enter down below that, that Rebel are doing themselves. If you want to just try it in their store, there's a discount code, which is Hoffman30, that gets you 30% off this in their store. Initially, it's available in the UK and a few European countries. It's coming to the US later in the year. It'll probably be in Australia beforehand and other territories as well. If you've tried it, let me know what you think. I would love to hear your thoughts, your experiences drinking it and steaming it. If you get some and you pour something beautiful, tag me in on Instagram. I want to see it all. I would love to hear your thoughts. I would love to hear your experiences. I genuinely enjoy hearing your feedback on this one. It's been a really enjoyable process. So let me know your thoughts. I really want that feedback. I really want to hear about your experiences. And so do Rebel. I think they're definitely a company that are driven to keep iterating and pushing this and perfecting this in the future too. So that should be a fun continuation of this journey. But for now, I'll say thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.